Warm greetings to all the Jira and Active Directory users and admins. My name is Dimitri Fripp. I am making this tutorial on behalf of Divinity. We are an Atlassian and Platinum Enterprise partner with more than 14 years of experience on the market. Over 4,400 companies in 64 countries have trusted our solutions, including Germany-based Edeker Hosting, Swiss newspaper Neue Zuhel Zeitung, American estate holding Opus Group and academic organizations like the University of Turin and the University of South Wales. We provide technology to boost your team's performance and quality support to maintain it. Today we're gonna talk about a common problem that can occur when you work in a big company. It can be hard to find a particular person there, or even to figure out who to reach out for in the first place. In such companies, user data is usually stored in Active Directory or on some other kind of LDAP server and is managed by a dedicated admin. This is not so convenient for both sides, because oftentimes one needs to ask another to do something that could be easily handled on one's own. But when you also use Jira server for managing the projects that you work on, you can synchronize its internal database with Active Directory and put these two powers together to have more actual information about the users at hand and thus make your work easier, as well as the admins work. I asked the support team and they told me that nearly 70% of requests regarding LDAP synchronization are caused by insufficient understanding of the actual arrangement. So let's first take a brief look at how Active Directory works and how we can connect it to Jira. To cut it short, Active Directory uses a domain structure to contain and organize information about shared resources such as servers, volumes, printers and accounts, users, groups and computers. It stores information such as names, passwords, phone numbers, etc. and makes it searchable. Then web applications can use LDAP or Lightweight Directory Access Protocol to look up this information. There are a few LDAP servers on the market, and fortunately Jira provides built-in connectors for the most popular ones, such as Microsoft Active Directory, Apache Directory Server, Fedora Directory Server, and a bunch of others. There is a step-by-step -step guide to establishing LDAP connection on the Atlassian documentation, but for the sake of clarity, let's just go through the basic terms of Active Directory. The distinguished name of an object is a string of components separated by commas. CN stands for common name, the naming attribute for objects of such classes as user, contact, computer, group and container. DC is the domain controller or domain component as used in the DN. The organizational unit is a middle level between a common name and a domain controller. So if the distinguished name of an object is what you see on the screen, then its canonical name would look like this. After LDAP connection has been established, the information on users is cached and stored in the internal Jira database, which then can be displayed on the user public profile. When setting up an external user directory, you can choose to make it read-only, read-only with local groups or read-write. The read-write option is the full sync. Any changes made to user and group information in Jira will also update the LDAP directory. It's important to keep in mind that you cannot import users from ID before creating Jira accounts for them, because the Jira's database is a starting point for the synchronization process. Also, the users cannot log in until the synchronization task has copied their details into the cache. You can learn more on the synchronization details in the Atlassian official documentation. So every time a user logs in, the user's data in Jira is updated from the corresponding fields on the LDAP server. By default, this includes username, display name, email and group memberships. However, only direct groups are collected from LDAP and not the nested ones for example, and only groups already present in Jira are synchronized. This means that AD groups cannot be added nor removed from Jira and group structures are not synchronized as well. But as I mentioned, LDAP servers often store useful contact information like phone numbers, departments, managers names and such. What if you could display and manage more of this data with no need to access the Active Directory? We thought it would be very useful to have it in a handful of places in Jira and created the app that takes the default synchronization up to the next level. With Active Directory Attribute Sync, you can display any available information on users from Active Directory in user profiles, hover dialogues, as custom fields in Jira issues and even on the customer portal. 
The displayed information is synchronized as often as you set it up and thus is always up to date. Moreover, with our multi-purpose update data post function, you can partially implement identity management in Jira, namely, create a new user in Active Directory, add or remove a user from an Active Directory group, update user's attributes in Active Directory, lock or unlock a user's account in Active Directory and reset its password. Other features and tricks that the app provides include only user from AD condition for simplifying issue acceptance and filtering tasks by Active Directory attributes with a dedicated JQL function. Let's check out how it works and looks like in Jira. First, let's take a look at the app's configuration. I'll briefly explain the settings to those of you who don't know. This app inevitably requires some technical knowledge, so you have to understand the basics of your AD structure and how the servers work together to configure it properly. We'll go through it just for general understanding. If you're a non-technical user, we suggest that you ask your admin to help you with the configuration. This will probably be the last time you ask him to do something with the app. The connection name is different from the connection ID. As multiple connections can be established, you may name them differently to distinguish from each other. The ID number of each connection is assigned automatically by the system. To put in the LDAP server URL correctly, you'll need to know the server's IP address and the connection port. Know that this URL always starts with the LDAP prefix. Then the username is the distinguished name that the application will use when connecting to the directory server. Obviously, you should also know the password to connect successfully. After this, guide the app at where it should look for user objects. Base DNs are the root DNs to use when running queries against the directory server. You can add more than one base DN, separating them with a semicolon. In the login field, you specify which field the username will be copied from. What you type in here depends on your server's settings or its operating system. SEM account name refers to the user login name pre-Windows 2000 field, and the user login name for newer systems is referenced by CN. As the user filter's name states, it is the filter for user objects. Select follow referrals to follow or clear to ignore any referrals automatically. You can also delete data for inactive users on synchronization. The minus one turns it off, zero deletes data right after the sync, and positive values stand for the amount of days for a user being inactive to clear data. Then, if the fetch group information option is turned on, which is necessary to make the update data post function work at its fullest, you specify the group attribute name, which is the attribute field to use when loading a group's name, the group filter, which is the same as the user filter but for groups, and the member attribute name, which is the attribute field to use when loading a group's members. The next thing to configure is the synchronization itself. Specify the user profile title to display data from AD under it. Check the periodically synchronize option to perform this process automatically at equal time intervals and then provide a cron expression to specify these intervals between sync attempts. It can be configured in a friendly way to non-technical users, you just provide the amount of minutes, hours or days. You can also perform a manual synchronization anytime you need it. Then you enable the whole setup with the last checkbox and save it. Perform a connection test to check if you did everything right. Then scroll down and provide the fields that you would like to sync with Active Directory. Be careful when providing the field names from AD, they should match perfectly to synchronize. The fields in Jira that will display the data are custom, so it's up to you how you name them. You may want to show the user's full name rather than the username. To do this, tick the Contains User checkbox and the selected field will become a user picker. Then choose where you want to display this field. From here, you can set it up for the user's public profile and the hover dialog. But don't forget that there are two in other places to show it, which are configured in a custom field section. The Create Options checkbox is useful when there are multiple values for the same field in Active Directory, like phone numbers, then you can collect them all as options in a single select custom field and sort them if you need it. When you are satisfied with a set of fields to synchronize, perform the sync and set your custom fields. There is a dedicated custom field that contains users' attributes from AD and can be displayed at the issue view and on the customer portal. 
It is marked with the app's name, so it's easy to find on the list. After you add the field to the needed screens, you go into its configuration. You can display contact information for the reporter, the assignee, the current user, or their respective managers. Select the fields that you'd like to see in the custom field and check if you want to display it on the customer portal as well. Now, as the app is configured and ready to use, I'll show you 10 ways to make the data from AD work for you and your team. Let's say there's a John, who is a support engineer and is about to arrive for his first working day at Amazing Corp, which is a big corporation with thousands of people employed. Instead of waiting until the admin pulls him into the database, grants the permissions and stuff, he can get down to work right at the moment when he walks into the office. How's that possible? Chris, his manager, added the update data post function to the create issue transition of the onboarding task and set it up to add the user to the LDAP server automatically. He could add John to the database directly from Jira and what's most important, he could do it on his own. The same goes for unlocking users and resetting their passwords. If John is deep in thought and types in his old password five times in a row, there's no need to wake up the admin. Chris will simply create a reset password task which will trigger the same post function set up differently. He'll provide a new password in a custom field and then make this task in progress to unlock the user in Active Directory so John will be able to log in again and go on with his work. Being a large company, Amazing Corp has more than one office even in the same city. It happens so that John and Chris work in different locations. In this situation, John simply looks at Chris's user profile in Jira and knows where he is immediately. There, he also sees Chris's phone number to contact him quickly if he needs it. As a support guy who is new to Amazing Corp's products, for the first month John needs Chris to have an eye on the requests that he deals with. Chris came up with a smart way to track John's work. Instead of looking into Jira every 10 minutes or so, he set up the copy property post function to add him to a dedicated custom field every time John is assigned to an issue. The company has changed directions a bit recently, so the marketing team decided to rebrand. Being an ordinary support guy, John only knows that the company is to change its name, logo, web page, and basically everything. He knows, though, that these changes will have an impact on his work too. Just one day he won't get emails from users, because they will still be shown the old email address at the customer portal. But with the update data post function set up to update this attribute, John can request for updating his email by creating a service desk issue and typing his new email into a custom field. Chris then will change the issue status, and John's email will update on transition automatically in both Jira and Active Directory. Apparently, John has been performing pretty well and is ambitious enough to push himself into the team leader's chair. Even if such a decision can be difficult for Chris, in software this is done in a couple of clicks with the same old post function trick. Creating an issue and changing its status is enough to grant John all the needed permissions in Active Directory. Being a team lead, John often needs to check all the issues that his team is working on. But Jira Service Desk is used by multiple teams across the company. That's where the dedicated JQL function provided by the app is helpful. John has saved this query and only adds new parameters if he needs it. After leading his team to great results, John starts considering himself a superstar. Knowing that managing staff are allowed to have more expensive gear, he tries to purchase a pack book on his own. Imagine how disappointed he is discovering that Chris has to accept the request beforehand. The company's procedure is that all the hardware requests include a workflow condition, which require acceptance from the management, and no one else can push these tasks forward. Obviously, Chris isn't in great hurry accepting the purchase, even though it's been already assigned to Andrew, one of the IT guys. John waits for a couple of days and then tries to get sneaky around Chris by calling Andrew at the number he sees on the customer portal and asking him to make the purchase anyway. But Andrew only answers, Sorry man, I can't. There are procedures and stuff, you know. Unable to get what he wants, John leaves Amazing Corp, mad and totally unsatisfied. All that remains to be done by Chris is to create an offboarding task with an update data post function and close it, removing John from the user group on his final transition.
So by these 10 stories, you can tell easily that the Active Directory Attribute Sync app is helpful to Jira users, managers and admins throughout all the employees' life cycle in the company. It helps reach the people you need easier, resolve internal requests faster, and automate data synchronization between Jira and Active Directory so as to keep all the information up to date. This year, we are planning on releasing Active Directory Attribute Sync 3. The release will include a slightly revamped configuration wizard to make the process easier and faster. Also, we are gonna add the synchronization journal to help the admins dig into the details and recognize possible errors. If you're interested in powering up your Jira server even more, here are some suggestions on what apps can be helpful to you. Issue templates allows auto-completing the target field values and automated creation of subtasks and whole epic structures. I've hosted another webinar on this app lately, check it out on YouTube or Facebook. Issue Sync is the most secure way to synchronize issues between different Jira instances. Dynamic Forms makes huge forms tiny by showing or hiding fields and tabs depending on the options you choose. TestFlow and RecFlow are elastic tools to manage tests and requirements right inside your Jira. Want to know more about us? We are blogging once a week on our website. User documentation for our apps, information about the events we take part in and the webinars we host are available at the support webpage. We can also find us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Follow Divinity Apps by the links you see on the screen to track the latest news from our company, our partners and IT in general. In case of inquiries regarding our products, please get in touch with the Divinity support team. Have a nice day and goodbye.